26-year-old wannabe entrepreneur Luke Freeman lives in Bristol, works as a head chef, and earns £15,000 a year. But he's cooked up a stomach-churning debt of £25,500. I can't control my spending, and I just don't think about what I'm buying and just spend the money and think about it later. Fine cuisine, drinking, and Luke's number one passion, snowboarding... £723.92, please. ..have sent his spending way out of control. It's just that first credit card at 18 got me started. Now I'm in 25 and a half grand worth of debt and I don't know what I'm going to do. Luckily, this is one mountain he won't have to tackle alone. Help is at hand. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt will show Luke how to reduce his hefty cash flow. And you need to find another way of dealing with crises when they come up, yeah, rather yeah. than constantly asking your mum. While psychologist Mark Hopkins will investigate the emotional reasons for Luke's addiction. When you were younger, did you compare yourself then against other people who were kind of, you saw to be getting more than you? Yeah. I do like going snowboarding and eating out and having a good time, but I don't want to be bankrupt at the age of 26. Luke works as a chef at the River Cafe in Bristol. Right, you've got two Greek salads, one cheese and chive mash and gravy. He's paid £300 a week in cash, which he blows in the bars and clubs of the city. Very generous. He's an absolute sweetheart and total sort of got a heart of gold. But if he's got, like, 20 quid in his pocket, he will spend it. So if you're at the bar and he thinks, I've only got 20 quid to last me a few days, then that's it, gone that night. Two years ago, Luke found the love of his life, but she's an expensive mistress. I'm looking for holidays in Morzine in France, okay. snowboarding holidays. By going snowboarding on the Never Never, his spending is now completely out of control. OK, so that's £680 per person then, please. Lovely. Luke shares a house with his friend Dom and pays £325 a month rent. While they're out and about, the experts borrow the keys and have a route around. Jay is looking for where the cash is going, while Mark wants to piece together a psychological profile. Wow, look at this. Yeah, all Computers, those boys' toys. Yeah, <laughs> records. Snowboarding. He looks quite good. Yeah, he does. I suspect he's been doing it for a while. <laughs> Wow. See, that's what I call boy speakers. Yeah, definitely. You've got that. some... The setup's great. You've got two over here, one over there. Probably linked to a system over there. It's great. Those are expensive. Yeah. Let's check out some drawers, see what else we can find. Oh, oh, just some remote controls in there, not all else. Hey, look. There's ah, a whole stainless. load of... Yeah. Oh, yes. There's lots here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now we can find out where it's all been going. Right, I tell right. you what, I'm going to leave these here. Don't let me forget them on the okay. way out. All right. Look at that. Ha-ha. <laughs> What's this? Ah, oh, it's a snowboard. An expensive yeah. snowboard. Well, he obviously uses it. Yeah. It's quite a nice board. Yeah. I mean, that's about £400 worth of yeah. board. And also, snowboarding holidays aren't cheap. Well, that's the thing. Quite weird to think that someone just, who I don't know is going through my stuff. Don't know what they're going to find. I don't think there's anything there that shouldn't be there. Neat kitchen. It's very clean, isn't it? I know. I'm going to have a sniff around <laughs> the fridge. I know. To the I fridge. love looking in people's fridges. What have we got? Fresh produce. It's quite healthy in there. Apart yeah, lots from of a lot of beer. beers. <laughs> yeah. But look at that. That is quite. That's a hefty chunk of meat. Yeah, beef. How if much I is had that? to hazard a guess, it's like beef, about forty quid. For that? Yeah. I wouldn't mind coming for dinner. Yeah, here. no, definitely. I'm going to have a quick look in this garden, yeah, shall Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, look. Oh, a boat! <laughs> oh, it's in disrepair, though. Look I wouldn't really that. call it much of a boat at the moment. Listen, I don't know much about boats, but what I do know is a boat that is not in the water <laughs> is generally expensive uh, yes. because it's being repaired <laughs> and that costs a lot of money. He's an outdoorsy kind of guy, isn't he? So you've got the snowboard and you've got yeah. the boating. 
quite expensive hobbies, but also about excitement seeking mm. as well. Here's someone who likes to be outdoors and doing things, and that doesn't come cheap. No, that's for sure. Here's bedroom. Yeah. Oh, not a lot of room to open the door. Oh, look. More sort of... Snowboarding yeah. type glasses, aren't they? Caps. But look at this, you see, all these T-shirts. Mm. And it's, I mean, it's a look. And if you yeah. look at all of those sort of trainers There's... under there, well, and they're about cheap. 50, 60 pounds yeah. and for a pair about, of those. It's about 12 pairs there, by the way. But he's obviously really into this whole yeah. look. It's an image. His yeah. concept is about being a snowboarder. He wants everybody to know. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, I'm a snowboarder. Exactly. Jay and Mark take away Luke's statements to delve deeper into his wrecked finances. Luke may be £25,500 in debt, but this budding entrepreneur is counting on his many business ideas to run up some fast cash and clear the backlog. But as his friends know, he never sees them through. He should have been in only fools and horses, definitely. He likes to have his finger in every pie. That's his problem, though, is he doesn't just focus on, on one thing at a time. He's, He's always got a dozen things without sort of concentrating on it. I'd like to see myself um, as a successful entrepreneur. At the moment, I'm a bit of a joke. Um, I've got all the good ideas. When I set a business up, I just want to throw lots of money at it, have all the best bits so the business runs properly. I hate being employed. I want to be the employer. To fuel his outdoor lifestyle, Luke insists upon the finest prime cuts of organic steak. Brilliant, I'll have six of those. You like six of those? Yes, please. At five pounds a time, they don't come cheap. What's the damage? In round figures, it's 30 quid. Thank you very much. I like fillet steak. Just so nice when they're nice and rare and bloody and you can soak all the blood up in your chips and stuff. Um, I like all steaks, really. I just like all really nice, good quality meat. For Luke to break free of debt, he must accept that he can no longer afford the adrenaline lifestyle he so adores. It's time for some shock treatment. Wow. <laughs> it was clear to Jay and I walking around that there was one thing you were spending a significant amount of money on, and this is, is it. Amazing. This is it. Each one of these artificial snowflakes represents one penny that you've spent on snowboarding right. over the last two years, and there are over a million artificial <laughs> snowflakes here. That means you spent over ten and a half thousand pounds on snowboarding in the last two years. Right. What do you think of that? It is a lot of money, and I do realise it's a lot of money, but it's such an expensive hobby. It's like, my last holiday cost £1,200 for a week. We need to do something about that yeah. because, you know, you're spending a lot of money on that and that's one of the big things that's taking you into debt. I've been planning to go five times this season. Go abroad snowboarding Snow five times yeah. every month for five yeah. consecutive months. Yeah, one week each month. And how much do you expect that to cost each month? Probably in the region of about £600. All right, so £3,000 on snowboarding in the next... Yeah. A few months. The way you're going at the moment, you're going to be unable to pay that debt off and unable to ever travel again and go snowboarding yeah, yeah. because you're, you're going to run Just, out yeah. of credit. So exactly. that's, however much it's a passion, mm. we've got to find some Slow way of down. you getting yeah. satisfaction and regulating it yeah. so you can still enjoy it, but on a budget, because otherwise you ain't going to be going again. Yeah? yeah? Is that a deal? Yeah, that's cool. Why don't you go and enjoy your <laughs> <laughs> ski resort? <laughs> To impress upon Luke the seriousness of his situation, Mark and Jay have lined up a second illustration. They brought him into the heart of the Gloucestershire countryside, just 30 miles outside Bristol, to an organic farm to make him realise prime cuts of beef needs to be a rare luxury. Now, I wanted you to have a look at what's in here, Luke. Three very attractive young bulls. Now, why do you think we could have possibly brought you here today? Because I like my steaks. These are organically reared prime Herefordshire bulls. Right. Each of them represents just over £1,000 because you've managed to spend in the last 12 months on your fillet steaks, your eating out and fine dining, a total of £3,179. OK, it's a lot of money, isn't it? It's quite <laughs> it a lot a of lot. money for a decent steak, isn't it? Yep, but you've got to pay for quality. Do you always buy the same cuts? 
Um, no, I love fillets. I do <laughs> love my fillets, but I do eat ribeyes and sirloins occasionally. So, so you do rough it occasionally? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> would this be an area that you would be prepared to compromise on and look at maybe cutting back on? Yeah, to an extent. <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of hesitation yeah, there, yeah. actually. Is it for, like, a health reason, then, that you no, buy No, no, it just tastes reason? so much better. Right. It does. Like, the meat you get in the supermarkets hasn't been hung as long. You can see by the colour, it's not as nice colour. It's been pumped with water. Um, so I'd just rather have a well-hung piece of meat. What we're looking at is a love of fillet steak, a love of snowboarding yeah. and a massive debt. Yeah. We are going to have to make some compromises along the road, aren't we? I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Concerned that Luke is not taking the situation seriously, the experts hope a week on the tightest budget imaginable will change his mind. Before we decide what this figure is going to be, we just wanted to find out if you have any idea of what your average spend is in a week. Probably around 120. Right. And how do you get cash out? Do you keep a record? You go once a week, twice a week? Is it random? Um, how does it work? Well, because I get paid in cash, so oh. I just have it in my pocket. So it's there, so I spend it. Well, we've been through all your statements, and you may be interested to know that you spend considerably more than 100 to £120 a week, because on average, you're getting through £396.20p. And that is what it looks like, which is considerably more than you thought, isn't it? Yeah. And what you're doing is, is actually spending three and a half times what you think you are. So there's a real mismatch yeah, yeah. in terms of your perceptions and reality, and that's one of the things we need to look at. Well, what do you reckon you need to spend money on? Because you walk to work, don't you? You eat at work, you've got some food at home, you don't have to pay generally when you're going out because all your friends are promoting evenings and things like that. So it's really just drink, isn't it? Yeah, considering my favourite drink is about eight pounds a glass. So. Eight pounds a drink? Yeah. What is it? Uh, double Tanqueray and tonic. <laughs> Which is what? Which is a type of gin. So it's kind of when you want something and you treat yourself to things, it's kind of the best things yeah. to buy. Mm. So based on the fact that that is all going out every week, what do you think you could survive on for one week? 50 quid. If you thought you were spending 120, you're cutting that in half, I'd be looking to push that lower. I was thinking... 10, 10 pounds. All right, then. I reckon I could do it. Do you? With change. <laughs> With change? He's There's a man who's confident. Yeah. I'm up for a challenge. <laughs> well, you're a brave man, Luke, because, if I'm honest, we've never actually asked somebody to survive on as little as £10 mm. a week. But because of your job and everything, I think it's doable, and I'm really pleased that you're up for the challenge. So good luck over the next seven days. Mm. Luke may be feeling confident, but as his friends know, when in trouble, he has what he thinks is a bottomless money pit to turn to. He's got someone to fall back on all the time. His mum will always bail him out. He gets a huge amount of debt. When it comes to a business venture, he's got no worries. He knows that at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, then he's got a backup plan, basically. Someone else is going to look after him. £19,000 of Luke's £25,500 debt is owed to his mother. He knows I'm not going to turn him away. And also, in the past, he's built up debt with me and then paid it off, and, which is another reason why, of course, I, I've been helpful, because Luke has, has been very honourable about paying back debt in the past. But I think now what's happened is it's just got too big. For the next seven days, Luke must survive on a mere £1.43 a day. He's already lining up a solution. I've looked after my friends quite a lot in the past, so it's their turn to look after me now. It may be cold turkey, but a meagre £10 won't stop Luke from eating well. To pinch the pennies, the head chef rustles up a rock-solid recipe. This risotto should sort me out for food for the rest of the week. There's a good four meals here. 
and I go to work on Thursday and I don't have to buy food there, so I should be sorted. If I can survive on a tenner a week every week, that would be great. That would get my debts down amazingly. Absolutely gorgeous. For £3.47, you can't go wrong. With meals sorted for the next four days, Luke makes a surprising cash discovery that was formerly beneath him. Got some good news. I found £1.30 underneath the sofa. So my budget's gone up to £11.30 and I'm off to get myself some cigarettes. Thank you. Temptation comes calling. Luke's friends are planning a big night out and want him to come along. With so little in hand and so much at stake, this could spell disaster. Speak to you later. Bye. I'm so hungry. It seems the budget is holding firm. Cheers, boys. Thank you very much. I know that Luke's been put on the tenor for the week, so we're just helping him out, you know, as he would help us out when he's doing well for himself. His friend's generosity doesn't stop at drinks. A two-for-one pizza deal ensures Luke's budget remains in one piece. Three days into cold turkey and Luke still has £5.55p remaining. To help out a friend and steer clear of the local snowboarding shop, Luke volunteers for a spot of dog walking. Say hello to Happy. And where is she? Happy! <laughs> what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> Some quick thinking and £2.68 later on Chalky Drops means Happy is on the streets and finally living up to her name. Halfway through the week, Mark invites Luke for a chat. He is keen to discover what's driven him into so much debt. Can you just talk to me about why you think you spend so much as a start? I really enjoy spending. When I spend money, I'm made happy. I like buying clothes. It just cheers me up. I've just always wanted to be rich, basically. Like, and what does being rich mean for you? Um, it means being able to do what I want, when I want, and not be restricted. Why is that so important for you? Because nobody likes restrictions, really, do they? And I just want to have fun with my life. I don't want to... I don't want to end up depressed and lonely and... I just want to have a good time and live my life to the maximum, basically. And what happens if you were in a situation where you couldn't do that? I've always found a way of either blagging my mum to lending me the money or putting it on a credit card, and if there's something I really want, I get it. With my mum, I feel quite guilty about the amount of money I owe her. She's going to retire soon, she needs her money, so I just want to get it back to her. How much have you borrowed off of your mum? I think I owe her 19000 at the moment. When I, get, when I get paid into my pocket, I just usually drink it away um, and then make up an excuse to my mum why I haven't been able to pay her back. But that doesn't stop you. It's, mm. You still see it as your money by the sound of it. Yeah, because I can see myself paying it off in the future. Mark soon discovers that Luke's happy-go-lucky attitude towards money could stem from his parents separating at such an early age. I, I think I'd prefer them to be divorced rather than together. I think life would have been a lot different if my dad had lived there. He's like... I don't know, he's like quite strict and stuff, and... I've got my mum and you know, I'm a bit of a mummy's boy and I can get away with a bit more stuff, I suppose. It sounds like, from what you're saying, that you didn't have as many constraints put on you by your mum. Yeah. When you were younger, did you compare yourself then against other people who were kind of... you saw to be getting more than you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I kind of always wished that we were a bit richer and we could have a few more things and... But it's, it sounds to me like you have to do all these things, like the snowboarding, the going out a lot, they're the things that make you feel happy. Yeah, no, they do. 
Definitely. And, and when you're not doing those, what you said earlier was actually that you can feel unhappy and, and be oh, yeah, depressed. Oh, yeah, 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 no. The only thing that I can think that makes me unhappy is the amount of money I owe and not being able to do what I want to do because I've got no money to do it with. And I think Luke just doesn't feel very good about himself as a person and he needs to be around other people and have goals and aspirations to take his mind off how he feels about himself and just really avoiding the issue. And I think he feels clearly bad about what he's doing to his mum with the spending, but I think she's not helping the situation because she's actually encouraging it. I was absolutely shattered. I hadn't done anything like that before and it was just quite hard work, um, mentally draining. I've been saying to like my mum that I've wanted to go and like talk to somebody for ages because um, I think I'm a little bit messed up, so it was quite good. It's Friday night in Bristol, and while Luke is far from flush, it won't stop him going out with his mates. I'm not going to spend anything tonight, it's all free, so I'm sorted. He's managed to blag a pass to a drinks promotion. Very nice, especially as it's free, and it's not coming out of my budget, so I'm happy. <laughs> Sunday. Drinks are not the only thing he's trying to wangle. I'm on the black. So whatever you girls can give me. No, it's all good. Yeah, be coming over like a packed lunch at work. Like, here you go. I don't want a packed lunch. I want to be taken out for a meal. <laughs> he's just such a show-off. Like, he, he never cooks. Just, like, eats out every night. Like, goes out, spends the most money. He's just, like, a, a show-off, basically. The whole, the whole night he's been... Um, desperately taking us to one corner and telling us to pay for him the rest of the week, so yeah. it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it, he can start, no. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I've managed to not spend any money on alcohol this week. Loads of all my friends have come to the rescue and bought me drinks everywhere I've gone. Everyone's been really generous. The next morning, Luke fights the poverty blues by watching a snowboarding DVD. Barring any disasters, Luke's £2.87 should see him sweet until the end of the week. The electric's about to run out. What I have to do is try and blag my housemate into paying for it. If I can get him to pay for it all for this week, so I've got some money left. One quick phone call to his housemate, and the problem is solved. One medium rare, and then two rares. Free food at work lets Luke starve his budget while feeding his steak need. But the stress of living on a shoestring is starting to take its toll. One more day to go of cold turkey. The last couple of days have been pretty stressful. Despite horrendous debts and an almost empty wallet, after only four months in his job, Luke makes a hasty decision. Work's been hell, and I've handed in my notice. I'm leaving in two weeks. With no prospect of money and a debt of £25,500, life is looking bleak. It's Tuesday morning and Luke spends his final day of cold turkey looking for a new job on the internet. With a craving for crisps and cola, he blows £2.15p on a bag full of comfort food. Cold turkey was bloody horrible. I don't want to go through that again. £10 to live on is not a lot of money. With the help of his friends, Luke has managed to survive seven days on next to nothing. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt meets up with Luke to see whether the experience can provide some long-term lessons. I just wanted to ask you how you got on in your cold turkey week on £10. Um, it was quite hard work. I bet it was, um, actually. So did you go over budget? Um, now I've got 72p left. 
Really? Yeah. So definitely within budget. <laughs> yeah, I know I said I'd give you back a five now, but... <laughs> well, that's not bad, though. I wasn't expecting that. Jay has put together a budget based on Luke finding a new job paying the same as his current salary. It also allows him to pay off his debts in four years. When you add up our columns here, at the moment, you're spending every month £2,116, mm -hmm. which means you've been overspending by £916. Yeah. One of the areas that it's massively going on is going out. Yeah. That is a big thing. Alcohol, that's coming in at the moment at £200 a month. Yeah. And we have cut that back to £50. Pounds. Okay. Now, it's completely unrealistic for yeah. us to put that in at zero because, you know, your whole yeah. life is geared around your social life and going exactly, out and all the rest yeah. of it. But, you know, you have got serious debt and we're going to have to make some cuts somewhere. So I don't know how you feel about that. Like, if I tried really hard, I could probably cut that back completely, but then I wouldn't be that happy, so... Eating out, at the moment, it's costing you £160, and that's with all your takeaways and eating out at restaurants. What I'd like you to do is to cut that right back to £50 and do a lot more cooking in the house. Now, snowboarding holidays yeah. is going to come as no surprise. What we've done is worked out, on average, how much every month of the year it's costing you, whether you're on a holiday that month or not, and it's actually £400 a month goes yeah. towards your snowboarding obsession. If we said this season you are not going to be snowboarding because your debts are so bad. Obviously I'm quite gutted that I can't go snowboarding. I love it. Is there a part of you that just thinks stuff it, I'm just going to go? Part of me does say stuff it, I'm just going to go. But if I'm going to be able to go snowboarding in the future I'm going to have to sort this out so I'm going to have to live with it, aren't I? What we've done is put together this recommended budget, which means that you would be spending £1,172 every month, which means you'd have a little bit left at the end of every month of £28. Yes. Do, do you think that is something that you could sort of stick to? Be hard work. Um, see, my problem is when I've got the money in my pocket, mm. then I'll spend it and don't think about it. What you've also got is your outstanding loan to your mum, haven't yeah. you? I don't want to be like one of these little brats that just gets given everything. I think it's good that I've got to pay it off and I have to work to do it. I just I don't want it to be wiped off. I want to get that money mm. back to her. Jay has made Luke realise the sheer hard work he'll have to face to clear his debt to his mum. On Jay's advice, Luke starts ringing around the job agencies. Unfortunately, it comes to an abrupt end. Do you know what? I think that's my phone being cut off now. <laughs> I just made a phone call. It was fine. And now it's not letting me. With his final payday still two days away, Luke doesn't have the £111 it will take to get his phone reconnected. Once again, Luke gets his mum to bail him out. She paid it just before she went to work. So I was back on, luckily. Thank God for my mum coming to my rescue again. With Luke falling back on his parental safety net, psychologist Mark Hopkins heads down to see Luke's mum, Teresa. So he's an infant with his sister, me and Brighton. So it's Luke with his father. Luke's first day at school. Mm. She's a teacher and due to retire in two years' time. With just a pension to tide her over, she'll need every penny she can get, including the money owed by her son. When he was growing up, um, we were on a fairly tight budget because we were managing on my teaching salary for a period of time. There wasn't money for frills. It was very hard to um, do spontaneous things with money. And I did have to say no to a lot of things that made me feel very guilty. And I think he's, he really kind of rebels against that now and just yeah. doesn't ever want to be restricted in any way. 
If Luke's ever going to grow up and take responsibility for his finances, Mark needs to convince Teresa she has to stop acting as a source of credit. How is this situation making you feel? Crap. Are giving you sleepless nights? Loads. Tears. Most of my meetings with Luke, I come away and I have a weep afterwards. Yeah. Um, I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night think, thinking about Luke and I can't sleep again. I would freak if I was in his position. I would be... Comp I wouldn't know... I, I would, I'd be in despair if I was in his position. Mm. You know, I, I can't imagine how horrendous it must feel to be in his position. Mm. I think one of the things with Luke at the moment is he's struggling to take responsibility yes. for his debt because he, there aren't still any consequences because he can come to you. And so you're telling me I've got to stop. I think, I mean, to be fair, I think it, it's, it's a, a, a good approach. Yes. Mm. So, in fact, I'm as bad as him. And I know that's a difficult message to hear. Mm. It's not a difficult message to hear because, actually, I know, you know, and, yeah. and if this was a situation where I'm in your position, it's precisely what I'd yeah. say. And, and, and there's a lump here because I know that's what I've got to do. Yeah. And, and I do agree with you, but it's actually a very hard thing to do. Luke's love of being on the piste is one of the reasons he's so in debt. Jay takes him on a 30-minute journey to a place where he can grab the rush without busting the bank. I'm not saying that this is, you know, recreating yeah. the joy of being in Verbier, but if you're going to miss a season and you're going to be paying back debts, if you ever get that kind of can't bear it, it's on your doorstep. So cool. let's go and get okay. your <laughs> on your board. Now, I'm going to introduce you to Jim. Jim, this is Luke. Hi, Luke. Hi, mate. You all right? See you, mate. You all right? But yeah, Jim's an instructor, and he instructs here and on real snow. So I thought it would be a good idea if he takes you off up there so you can just get your bearings cool. and know what's what. Is yeah. that OK? On a different, little bit different snow, but we should get you. Lovely. There you go. I'm cool. going to go and have a cup of tea and watch from really up there. I really think you should get some skis <laughs> I'm on. safer off <laughs> up there. <laughs> It's a little less forgiving than snow. Right. It sucks you in on your turns. Yeah. So you don't want to kind of down weight on your turn too much. OK. Basically, that pushes the edge in. So um, try and keep your weight lifted up yeah. when you do the turn. It may not be the real deal, but Luke soon gets the hang of it. Here, Luke, Lovely. I think you Thank deserve you very much. one of these. Oh, you look really good out there. Thank you. What did you think? <laughs> it was cool. It was like, at first, I, I didn't really... It was quite a lot different yeah. to snowboarding, and I found it quite annoying, sort of a 30-second run and then going back up. But towards the end of it, I did start to really enjoy it. Do it again, definitely. Would you? Yeah. If it means you can get half a fix yep. when you need it, and when you're having a bad day, you can just come and do this and get it out your system a bit. Then I think anything that helps you stick to that budget until you're back on track yep. would be a good thing. No, definitely. I'm definitely going to come again. It looks like Jay's money-saving idea may have found a convert. All my friends that go, I go snowboarding with have always been like, no, don't go try snowboarding, it's horrible, it's completely different to snowboarding. Um, but I really enjoyed it, I had a really good time. <laughs> Lucas found himself a new job, working self-employed in location catering for a film company. Possible to have about um, 60 burgers? Yeah, yeah. easily. Bye. Flush again, Luke's good intentions are soon forgotten and it's back to spending and partying. I got a sub from work, I went out and spent 80 quid. I'm earning more money now, so I've got a little bit more disposable income. Two weeks ago, Luke Freeman was in financial meltdown. 
his passion for snowboarding, expensive tastes in food and hard partying had racked up a debt of over £25,000. Psychologist Mark Hopkins has delved into the causes behind Luke's spending and the damage it's doing to his mother. While lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has recommended a new budget to rein in his spending and suggested a cheaper way of getting his adrenaline high. Halfway through their assignment, our experts get together to talk through Luke's progress. So how have you been getting on with Luke? Well, I had a chat with him, and I really think that the spending is all about the fact that he really doesn't like who he is and his lifestyle. I think if you go behind that whole snowboarder, party boy image, actually he really lacks a lot of self-confidence. And that's the area that I really want to focus on with him. Well, what I need to do with him is do a new budget. And now he's got a new job. So, one, he's going to be paid an extra £500 a month. And two, this is the first time that he's going to be paid monthly rather than weekly. So what I want to do is slightly revise his budget and hopefully put in place some money being paid back to his mum because I think this is going to be a key thing. If he can start to make a regular payment back to his mum, I want that relationship to start to get better and not be focused just on them being cross about money the whole time. Armed with Luke's revised budget that allows for the extra £500 a month he's now earning, Jay meets up with him to lay down the law after his latest binge. I understand you had a bit of a spend-up last Friday. Yeah, I know. Was, my friend was leaving, going away for a year, so I had to do it um, to say goodbye to him properly. Right. And how much did saying goodbye properly actually cost you? Uh, 80 quid. Right. Your debts are such as that we've got to get you to the point where you have one drink and then you can stop rather yeah, than yeah. just not caring. Because I think that is what happens, is it gets yeah. blanked out until the you know, light of day and we're looking down here at huge figures that need to be paid back. Agreed? To focus his mind on his new budget, Jay has come up with a visual representation of his monthly outgoings. Now, that's your mum. Yeah. That'll be £380. The household bills, £400. The dreaded credit card debt, £240. Then we've got a new area, which is putting aside money for your tax bill, £280. Now, this one you'll like, Luke, because here a nice picture and images of your snowboarding. Cool. And if you put £40 a month aside, that will enable you to go on a snowboarding trip next year. Yeah. One of my worries was that I'd heard this rumour yeah. that you wanted to do a sort of grand gesture and pay your mum back £1,000 yeah. straight away. Like, I'd almost rather give her more and then if I needed some money for an emergency or something, just sort of borrow a bit back or something, but... I think we've got to try and stop this mentality of constantly borrowing from your mum. I think we need to be just... That needs to be yeah. paid back and you need to work out or find another way of dealing with crises when they come up yeah, rather yeah. than constantly asking your mum. This is the new budget and new way forward. It's paying back mum, not borrowing. I feel quite bad that I've owed my mum all this money and it's quite a weight on my shoulders and I need to get rid of that so I start feeling happier because it's just depressing me. Over the years, Luke has embarked on a number of business ventures, from running club nights to selling sandwiches on the internet, all of which have failed to make any profit. Mark is convinced these experiences have profoundly affected Luke. It seems that one of the key origins of his spending comes from a lack of self-confidence. So today I want to address this. I've got some great practical exercises that I think will really help. And essentially what I want to start to do is to really map out all those times that you can think of when you felt really confident and when you actually saw something through. There's nothing that I've done really yet that I feel particularly satisfied with, do you know what I mean? Like, everything that I have kind of done so far, that I've wanted to do has kind of backfired, so... And I think this is really interesting, and I think it's really telling, actually, Luke. The problem is that you don't have enough belief or, or frames to be able to pull from yourself to say, 
I can, I'm a good person, or I can mm. do X, Y, and Z because of this, this, and this. And there's just that void there at the moment. And I want you to just brain dump to me what you think some of your most positive attributes are, and the things that have really helped you be success, either successful or help you in life. Yeah. I'm a hard worker. Yeah. Mark highlights Luke's positive characteristics, encouraging him to use them as building blocks to boost his self-confidence. This arsenal of things that you pull out of your head to say, I've got this situation, I can deal with it because I'm hardworking, I'm easygoing, I'm generous, yeah. lively, approachable, I take risks, I make decisions, I'm creative. And this is what I want to try and work on and really build your self-esteem and to a extent, you know, your self-respect as well, mm. to say, actually, I can do these kind of things. So Mark makes several suggestions for the future, but right now he wants Luke to concentrate on the boat that's been clogging up his backyard for the best part of a year. I don't so, want to get it sorted, yeah. I want to use it this year, so... Yeah. Let's prove to yourself that you can do it and that you can do it really well. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think actually, once you start doing those things and you start completing those things, you'll start to feel much better about yourself. OK. Yeah? <laughs> Okay. One of the things that I think Luke really learned from this is that he's got a lot more positive attributes than he gives himself credit for. This is going to be key to building his self-confidence. Taking on board Mark's advice, the following morning Luke and his housemate brave the elements and get to work. Luke bought the boat for £200 through an online auction and is hoping that getting it restored to full working order will produce a sizeable profit. I was speaking to my friend yesterday, he like got boats and stuff, and he reckons that once we've got it painted and looking good, we could get like three and a half grand for it, so that could be quite good. It may not be the pride of Bristol, but he thinks he might be on to a winner, even if his friends are a little sceptical. I think all our friends will be quite impressed as well because they were all quite, oh my God, you're not going to be out of that, won't be able to get in the water, that won't float, look at the state of it. Quite proud actually, it's gone on really well and it looks really good, so I'm really happy. Wasting no time the next day, Luke calls in an expert to see if this project really is worth keeping afloat. You've got no helm. There's no structural integrity up in the forepeak of the boat now, and you can actually see daylight yeah, I know. quite easily through that up there. So do you reckon yeah. just flip it over onto that trailer and then just sell it? I, I wouldn't even do that. To be honest with you, there are some people that even, even take these old boats and fill them and use them as big planters. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This wasn't the news Luke was hoping for. He decides to cut his losses and puts the boat up for sale. <laughs> Building on Mark's idea of getting Luke more focused and seeing through his ideas, Jay takes him to meet one of Bristol's most successful restaurateurs, 36-year-old Jason Deason. Ten years ago, Jason was a budding chef with ideas just like Luke. Now, he owns and runs his own business. I brought Luke to meet you, yeah. just really to have a chat with you about how you got started here, because Luke's, at the moment, doing some location catering, aren't you? Yeah. Which is keeping him oh, more right. than busy. But his yeah. long-term aim is really to do what you've done. But having your own business is a lot different yeah. to yeah. working with somebody else. A lot different. I've always been a chef, so I sort yeah. of, uh, I just kept, kept on learning all the way, and then we had the opportunity to buy our own place. So that's what we've done. I know that when I do set up my own place, I don't want so much of a, of a restaurant. I want it to be more of a gastro sort of pub. Um, and I want to be out of the kitchen, just writing the menus, but I don't want to be working in the kitchen, I just want to be... If you don't want to be the chef in the kitchen, but you know you'd like to have a place with a kitchen and you're doing exactly, good food, or yeah. you're, you're doing a lot of people, you, you've got, you want to be involved in the financial side, making sure it's working, because it can easily run away with you. You can have guys working in the kitchen, you can have your front house team, and yeah. they can be spending money willy-nilly. Well, I mean, exactly, I just want to oversee the whole lot. I don't, yeah. I don't want to be in one place, like in the kitchen or front of house, I just want to... Do you know what I mean? Be overseeing the whole lot. So, Jason, what do you think it's really taken from you, commitment-wise, to get to this stage where you are in a restaurant with your name above that door? I've had to, I've had to sacrifice a lot of, uh, a lot of things. I'd sacrifice my holidays because I'm, I'm here, but I, I do love my job. I mean, I, I had a lifestyle before which has changed dramatically through working for, yeah. for Decent's, having my name here, but 
You've got to, you've got to look, I've looked long term and I'm looking yeah. forward to, to hopefully I can do this so later on but I can, I can have my own time. Bit where I think it is really hard. Yeah, it's got to be, you've, got, you've got to grow up yeah. and you've got to get, your, get knuckled down and get on, get on with it. Because I think you are quite honest, Luke, with yourself and with us. You know, you've been very open about, look, this is my priority. I like doing a bit of snowboarding. Yeah. You know, I like having time to myself. I like doing X, Y and Z. But do you have a plan when it's almost like, as Jason was saying, that's got to stop? Having the motivation to do it, like, well, I haven't really got it at the moment. Um, but do you, where, do you think that's suddenly going to come one day out of the ether on your head? Or do you think that's something you have to create? Um, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know where I'm going to be. Like, I've been thinking about going to do another ski season in a couple of years. If I set something up, I wouldn't be able to go and do a season. So I'm thinking about getting something like that over and done with again, because I haven't done enough snowboarding. Um, I just, I don't know, really. I'm the sort of person that can't do the same thing for too long because I just get bored, so I like to move on and do something different. I do get I'm demotivated quite easily. I'm, I just need someone to just give me that little lift and just to go, come on, Luke, let's do this today. Jay and Mark are concerned that Luke's past failures and crippled confidence are hindering his future. To show Luke that he can be a success if he sets his mind to it and that he does possess valuable skills, Mark has arranged for Luke to teach a group of excluded teenagers how to cook on a budget. Think about how you feel when you're confident and those yeah. times when you're confident. And that's what I want you to project when you're in there. So how do you feel about doing this, apart uh, from being really quite, cold? I'm quite nervous. Um, I don't know, I feel like I'm not a very good teacher, so it should be quite fun. You ready to do it? Let's do it. OK, let's go. <laughs> Luke may be nervous at the prospect, but to Mark's surprise, he throws himself into the challenge. So has anyone got any ideas of what they'd like to cook today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you like to cook? Soup? What sort of soup? Uh, vegetable soup. Yeah. Anyone pasta. else? Pasta. What do you want with your pasta? Pasta. pasta. Cheese. Uh, but bolognese. Do you want... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you want like that? Yeah, with cheese. Yeah, yeah. Having agreed on a menu, the group head out to buy the ingredients. That looks all right. Oh, here we go. Chopped tomatoes. We need some cheese as well. Do you want to get some cheese? Yeah, yeah. Back in the centre and inside Luke's natural environment of the kitchen, his self-confidence begins to blossom. He shows Lee some of the basics of preparing food. He slices all the way down, not all the way through the onion, though. So if you just use the tip of the knife, yeah, yeah, like I'll show you, it, just like this. Like. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm teaching you, mate. Look, like this, just watch, right? So yeah, that. I know, go all the way down, but don't cut through there, see? Lovely. Yeah, let's cut that one a bit off. With the spaghetti bolognese almost ready, Mark takes Luke aside to see how he's finding the day. We are already getting into it. That's why. Yeah, I know. It's really, it's kind of your thing. It's, it's, just, it's, yeah, no, it's just like you know, the beginning bit, just sort of getting to know them and stuff. That's yeah. the nerve-wracking bit. But once you know them and stuff, it's all right. I obviously can do it. It's just having that confidence in myself to be able to do that. I feel like that. I've done all right. Yeah, so, I think so you're doing far. brilliantly. Do you feel good about how it's going? Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. It's good fun, do you know what I mean? It's something different, isn't it? Right, do you want to serve the pasta up, Lee? You do that, and I'll do the sauce. <laughs> Luke started the day being really nervous, and he came out of it being so confident about what he'd achieved. I'm really pleased for him, and I really want him to be able to take this and transfer it to other aspects of his life, and I really think he can do that. It was really good. It was good fun. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And I think I got a lot more out of it than I thought I would. I was quite negative about it when I was on my way there this morning and stuff and thought, oh, this is going to be a waste of time. It's not the sort of thing I want to do. I'm be up for doing it again, definitely, um, if they'd have me back. They seem to enjoy it, though, so hopefully they might. It's Saturday night in Bristol. Spurred on by Mark and Jay's advice, one party boy is reluctantly nowhere to be found. All my friends are out tonight. Rather save the money. 
um, and not go and blow 80 quid like I did last weekend. So I'm in doing my washing, <laughs> watching TV. So nice, exciting Saturday night for me. Jay has one last area of Luke's spending that she wants to help him with. Over the past two years, Luke's appetite for organic beef and fine dining has seen him chomp his way through over £3,000 worth of fillet steaks and other premium cuts of meat. Jay wants to show him there are ways to buy organic meat without the expense. This part is a, a top bit of beef. And this is where all the uh, big roasting cuts come from. The top side, silver side, top rump, some grilling steaks as well, and frying steaks. So, Graham, where on this would you find a cheaper cut of meat? Uh, it would be at this end, and uh, this is where you get the leg of beef or shin of beef from. Yeah. And I'll just sharpen that knife up. So all this meat down here is the meat that you do stews and things with, That's is right. it? You can't make a steak out of that. So you need the bigger, simpler, plainer muscles to get steaks from. Right. But this is much more complicated muscle structure. So you get lots and lots of... It's much of darker, isn't it? ...darker meat. Well, it's dark because it's been hung, and that needs slow cooking to break it down and make it palatable. But a huge flavour is released in that cooking process. I love slow roast food, like... Lamb shanks is one of my favourites. Yeah. yeah. So you could make something really fantastic out of that, oh, yeah, though, totally. couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how much would that be, shin of beef, per kilo? Around six, 6.50 a kilo. And how much is fillet steak a kilo? Around 40 to 45 pounds a kilo. So that's a big difference. There's a that? really a huge difference in the, in the price. Would your friends object if you served that up? Oh, not at all. My friends love all my food. Be tucking in. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, nobody's saying that you should give up eating fantastic yeah. meat and your fillet steaks, but we're going to think about maybe some other cuts. See, the only reason I like my fillet steaks is because I can have them nice and rare and I've got all that blood to soak up my chips. But I think it's about maybe thinking that until your debts get paid off, that's something you have as oh, a yeah, no, treat. Totally. And then in between times, we're thinking about different cuts, we're thinking about utilising the yeah. freezer and stuff like that, so you, you can stay on a budget, but you're not going to feel deprived by not having really great things. Yeah, yeah, no. Four weeks ago, Luke Freeman was a party-mad, steak-eating snowboarder, spending money faster than he could earn it, with mountainous debts of over £25,000. Jay has devised new ways for Luke to get his downhill thrills without the expense and drawn up a budget to help him begin paying off his debts. Mark has looked into Luke's borrowing from his mother and the damage it's doing to their relationship and tried to encourage his self-confidence by getting him to share his skills with others. Luke is now aware of the work he has to do to clear his debts and it's up to him to put Mark and Jay's advice into practice. It's Saturday morning in Bristol. Armed with his pay packet from his new job, Luke visits his mum and begins the long process of paying her back. Well, I've got some money for you. Oh, wonderful! 150. Thanks, honey. OK. <laughs> Luke has come to the end of his journey with Mark and Jay. They meet up for one last time to reflect on what he's learnt. How's the job going? The uh, job was brilliant. I'm loving the job. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, it's really good fun, doing loads of work, working Quite really hard. hard. So how have you found the whole experience? It's been hard work, a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, but I feel I've changed, so... Now you've got this job, it's almost like that's the route you're going down. Maybe yeah. not forever, but for the time being, you seem much more committed to this route, this is my focus, yeah. this is what I'm doing, and it's giving you a sense of satisfaction, which hopefully is making the fact that you're not going snowboarding a bit easier to bear. Yeah. Well, I am going snowboarding. Oh. <laughs> I'm going snowboarding next month. Um, I'm going to get a last-minute deal. I should be spending less than £400 for a week snowboarding, which is better than the £1,200 I spent on my last snowboarding holiday. So, I don't think 
you really want to change the person that you are. And I think that's fine. But I think now you have more informed choices about what your actions really mean for you yeah. and what you actually can do, which is where I really wanted to get you to. One of the crucial things that we've obviously been talking to you about is getting that regular payment in place to your mum every yeah. month. What difference has that made? I've actually have been giving her some cash, which is really good. She's happy, so no, it's good. I mean, I think that's great because I think the relationship between the two of you was a real pressure cooker mm. where your mum was desperate to help you but want you to take some responsibility. And I think really deep down you kind of wanted to feel like you were paying her back yeah, as well, yeah. but just not knowing how to do it. So I think that's fantastic what you've done. But I think there's a long way to go still. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. A hell of a long way. Do you feel better in yourself now you've come through this whole process? Definitely. I feel so much more confident in myself. Like, there's you know just things that I've noticed that I wouldn't have done before and now I do and it's yeah no it's, I'm really happy that it's made me more confident it's made me a better person so no it's all good well good luck <laughs> I need it <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to change my ways I still want to go out and have a good time spend the money I'm spending but I'm looking at it a different way now like I'm thinking, well, I haven't got that money, I can't go out, I'm not going to use my credit cards anymore. I haven't given up snowboarding, and I won't give up snowboarding. I'm going to carry on doing it, whether Jay and Mark like it or not. <laughs>